Hello, Mario here. The two peg test. Yeah, this is a fairly quick test that uh, most people use when they're using a a level, um, be it a like a spirit a spirit level in terms of a dumpy level or digital level or an automatic level. They're all same sort of names, but basically your standard level that you're using with a leveling staff, probably in a construction situation or strictly surveying situation. So this is a test of the collimation that, that the level is actually reading a level or horizontal line. In this case in the first top diagram the red line represents a truly horizontal line so this is what you would expect. However the green line that is showing a, a line that may have a slight error in it. However it is reasonable to assume that the error would be the same throughout the 360 degrees of where you wherever you pointed the level and the thing there is that the the, the error would be the same at the same distance so provided you can keep your back sights and fore sights level you can use uh, your, your back sights and fore sights equal you can use a level that is a slightly out of collimation however we want to test and just see how good our level is because probably not a good idea to be using a level that's out of collimation unless of course um, you absolutely have to in which case then you can uh, compensate or have a methodology that removes that that particular error so generally what we do is set our level up and then put two pegs at a on, on generally on a line through the instrument at a say a distance of 25 meters each that should be meters and I've put millimeters so I'll just get rid of that um, just get rid of that M there with a little quick little editing while we're doing this just to uh, you know show that we're not we're not all we're all fallible um, so let's just edit and cut that out so 25 meters each um, in each direction and then we take a reading to staff A and we'll treat that as a backside so we've got to set up your level book or your field note here I've set up the level book it's job number A502 and it's at, at bridge Z uh, we're doing some work around bridge Z and I'm using the Zeiss NO1 level um, these are my initials here MMO and Morris Martin O'Neill and the date 27th of July 2013 and the weather's fine so we set up for our 2p test we take a reading to A and a reading to B so A is our back sight B is our foresight and we get a fall as it happens of 0 0.021 meters now pays to check these very carefully so my reading methodology well, that I use when I am reading the leveling staff with a level is first I would read staff A and I would get 1.561 I would write that down in my book here 1.561 I would then look up again take another reading and hopefully it'll be 1.561 check that I've actually written down 1.561 and then I'll move the staffman on so let's just repeat that at staff B we look through to staff B get a get the read note the reading 1.582 write down 1.582 read again 1.582 check that's what we've written down and then move on it's very important because a small error here obviously could uh, cause you to have to do more work for the further on now the theory here is that provided you keep the back sights and fore sights equal the error will be equal at these two points and won't make any difference so this distance in here if there were an error won't make any difference to the difference in height between peg A and B now the next step in the in the two peg test is to then move the 
the level to as close as you can observe to point A. Uh, some me levels only focus down to a metre or so, but generally a metre or two metres is, is, is quite enough. And then what we do is take a reading on A, in this case, and um, treat that as a backsite, 1.603, and then we take another reading on B, uh, 1.623, and we subtract those to get a, a fall of 0 0.020. Now, we can see that straight away there that there's a millimetre difference. There's uh, a millimetre more fall in the first one than in the second one. So this suggests a difference of a millimetre, which is pretty good because usually with our staff that we're using, um, with the metric E staff, we're usually estimating to a millimetre. So that's well, that's that's a fairly reasonable indication that the level is okay. Now you'll see that when we're set up it in the in the second step here. It, that um, the distance that we're observing to be is some 50 meters and we've say we're, we're extremely accurate very confident that we've got a one millimeter error that's one millimeter error in 50 meters okay so that's um, that's fine and the sort of you could accept up to five millimeters up to five millimeters would probably be acceptable before you'd want to start trying to adjust this out. That's representative of one millimeter per 10, me 10 millimeters. So, I mean, uh, oh dear, that's one millimeter per 10 meters. So just delete one of those, that little M there. Let's take that out. Edit, cut. Now that's better. One millimeter per 10 meters, which is quite good. And we must remember, that that is only only when the back sites and four sites are not equal. So when we are leveling, we try all most of the time to try and keep our back sites and four sites equal, thereby reducing the the effect of any collimation error that may be present. Sometimes we can't avoid that because there are intermediate shots, maybe at shorter or longer distances, and so you know that we have to be a bit careful but generally for our main points of our traverse or level run um, we can keep the back sites and four sites equal and um, the, you know within a couple of meters or so and um, th that will keep all the errors due to collimation down so there we have uh, the two peg test um, done and, 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 and completed and recorded now when should we do this test well regularly should do it regularly but if say for instance when you get a, a new instrument from someone else um, or particularly before if you're going to do a particularly critical measurement um, good idea to uh, do the 2p test just to make sure that your level hasn't been bumped around in the back of the truck or something like that so regularly but before critical times and certainly when it's a new level a, a level new to you so um, I might just make a little note of that while while we're here um, so just a and just in a just a little additional bracket here um, if we can just to um, yes just uh, there just gonna get the color right now um, and, and and for a um, let's put a large size there, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll work on it. A new new level. Let's put that in brackets there. When a new level or new to you, or when even when a leveling's come back from servicing. Now here's the thing: what to do when you find uh, find an error? Um, you there are all of the instruction books for levels give ways of adjusting it out. But from my point of view, I think the best thing is to send it in for servicing, as it could be indicative of um, of a wider problem. Uh, and let's get the experts to get them adjusted correctly, and, and it's a good time to have our level serviced and and and, and make sure that you know there's no 
ongoing problems with it. So uh, if it gets up around the 5mm mark, um, certainly time for a service and get it in there and, and, and get it serviced. It's obviously had a some sort of a bump or gone out of gone out of adjustment. So the two peg test. Don't forget to keep your records um, for QA purposes. Very important that you can track back to when the, uh, a, a level was reading fine and then perhaps um, you know not so fine. Uh, good to know what what jobs you perhaps need to uh, just have a closer look at if if that's the case. So there you go, the two peg test.